Hey boys and girls, welcome back to Nino Kuni Wrath of the White Witch. In the last episode, we finally made our way into the land of Hamlin, the land of the hogs, the land of heavy machinery. Although we did get to meet the great sage Marcuson, we found out that he was utterly and utterly broken and shattered of his belief in everything, and that means he was broken hearted. Although we did find that out, and we fought off with his big old boss, po Porco Grosso, we actually didn't get to help him out yet. The thing is, although we found out that he was brokenhearted, we are back in the past, when the original Emperor of Hamlin was still alive, and we don't know how we got here. But, we're actually on our way to go and help out Marcuson and the older brother Gascon. But, for some reason, the Emperor doesn't want to help them out. Apparently, they're in trouble, and he doesn't care. And we don't know why. But, with that, let's continue. And, with that, head out of the city and look for the two young princes. And that's what we'll just about do. And, let's see if we can find them. And, it looks like a cutscene, so I'll be right back. Come on! Now! Here goes! Ugh! Oh, I just can't do it! Stop whining! Try again! Uh, huh? Be careful, Gascon! Uh, 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 Gascon! We gotta help them! Yes! And with that, we're officially in a little mini-boss fight, because usually you don't fight ogres unless they're in, um, bounty hunt missions. And this is our very first one, so we got ourselves an Earth Ogre. And he should be pretty dangerous if I remember correctly. Usually these things hit pretty hard, but it looks like we're pretty much hitting him to the point where he can't really do much here. Well, I guess we could just go all out then, because he's basically dead at this point. Wow, he's a lot easier than Porco was in the last episode. Although Porco was easy, this guy got completely and utterly shattered. He has no defense, and I'll take it. We attack pretty fast, too, and we have some high attack, too, so we pretty much just literally shattered his defenses. I'll take it. I'll honestly take it. And Esser reached level 29. Thank you, Esser. We needed you to hit there, and Zip V went all the way from level 1 to level 9. That is good. That is really good. Okay, I'll take it. And he gained a new ability, Short Circuits. Goliath level 10, not bad, not bad. And we finally found the princes. Thankfully, we were able to help them pretty easily, honestly. Hmm. Phew, cranky, that was a close one. Um, are you alright? You two are princes, aren't you? Your father is the emperor. M yeah, my name is Marcuson. Uh, shut up, you fool. We can't go telling everybody who you are. Oh, so your brother isn't going to tell us his name? Uh, leave me alone. Um, leave you alone? You Do you realize that you're, we're the ones that, who came and rescued you after all? Um, and went off all on your own, didn't you? Hmm. Hey, uh, no one asked you. Uh, we, we were practicing magic. Until you lot got in the way, that is. Um, Giscon, I'm hungry. M what, already? Well, I suppose we'd better get you, you something to eat then. Uh, come on, you lot. Huh? huh? You, you'd never make it back to Hamlin by yourselves. Y we'd better escort you. Um, escort us? Yeah, don't worry. You can thank us later. Hmm? Okay. He seems pretty, um, pretty proud of himself, honestly. The two princes are now traveling with you. And there we go, we officially helped him out, just like that, we just had to do a little bit of helping. Um, I don't know if there's any, like, um, actually I don't even know if there would be a cutscene in between here and there. It's not long of a walk, but I don't know if we have to walk all the way through Hamlin in order to get back to the palace. And if we do, I might do a cut, so I'm honestly not sure if there is. It seems like we do have to walk all the way back there, so I'll be right back since this is a long trek. So, beer be, boys and girls. Okay, here we go. Back in the Hamlin Palace. Or you can also call it the Porcelain Palace, since I'm pretty sure that's the actual name. But, there we go, we're finally back. Um, are you still not still following us? 
But we've got to tell the Emperor that we found you. <laughs> you want to see my father, do you? I wonder what you want from him. Uh, actually, I don't care. Bye. Well, see you later, buddy. See you later, Gascon. I'm surprised he doesn't actually say his name. It's not that important that he doesn't say it. It's really weird. Hmm, hang on a minute, man. We saved your skin back there. Ain't you going to thank us for something? Hmm, thank you. You're the ones who should be thanking us for escorting you back to Hamlin. Um, that's far from it, buddy. Hmm, the flipping cheek of this kid. I ain't ever seen anything like it, man. Hmm, kid? I'm not a kid. And I have a name, Gascon. Prince Gascon to you. Be sure to address me properly if we ever meet again. Uh, now come along, Marcuson. All right. <laughs> okay, see you later, Marcuson. We'll see you in the future. <laughs> Gascon and Marcuson are no longer traveling with you. Hmm, who the blinking heck does he think he is? He's got me proper wound up, he has. Um, so the two princes are called Gascon and Marcuson. There's something about that prince, Gascon. Hmm, what is it? I feel like I've met him somewhere before. I guess it's just my imagination, though. Hmm. Oh, definitely. No doubt about it. It's your imagination, all right, all right? Um, I guess so, huh? Hmm. Now stop wasting time with the brain- all higher brain theories. Um, we need to get moving. Yeah, we definitely do. Okay, back inside the palace we get. Okay, hey, Emperor. I actually don't think he has a name, honestly. I don't think you ever get this guy's name, so I guess we just call him Emperor. <laughs> That's his name. <laughs> <laughs> I admire your spirit. Not every child would be so readily to refuse an emperor. Um, I'm sorry, your majesty, but there's something we have to do. Hmm, indeed. And yet your magical abilities really are outstanding. I realize now that I should never have doubted you. You understand that I am reluctant to let such a talent slip away. Are you sure I can't persuade you to be Marcuson's magic teacher? <laughs> oh, just as stubborn as I remember. Mm, what did you say? Um, I'm sorry, Your Majesty, but we really do have to go back to our own time. It's just, we don't know how. Hmm, you wish to go back to your time, to the future. Well, breach time would be ideal, of course. Um, breach time? A legendary spell. One that allows the caster to take a leap through time. Alas, it has long been sealed away on the account of its power. Hmm, gee, that sounds like just what we need. I wonder if there's a way we could get this breach time spell. Hmm, I don't know who this could be. I'm going to guess maybe Gascon, so I'll go with this Gascon. Um, hey, I heard about your new rule. Oh, it is him. I was right. Why can't I go with Marcuson and help him practice his magic? Hmm, really, Gascon? We both know you haven't a single magical bone in your body. Marcuson is to become a sage, and he will learn nothing from the likes of you. That's not true. I'll teach Marcuson magic. I'll help him become a sage, you'll see. Hmm, he does not need your help. Your time would be better spent thinking of another role for yourself within the Empire. Um, what kind of role are you talking about? Hmm, would you have me spoon-feed everything to you? You must find your own answers to such questions. That is the Hamlin way. Ah, fine. Come on, Marcuson. Let's go and practice some magic. Um, alright. <laughs> Oh, I look cute little boy. I love Marcuson as a child. He's funny. He's really funny. Because it's you see how he is in the future, and you just see how like how like different he is. You can see he's very much of just a pure hearted kid at the end of the day. He's and honestly, I really like that because it actually shows the um the humanity in Marcuson since we can't see it yet because we have to actually unbreak heart unbreak his heart, which is going to be a while from now because we got a long chapter because for this area we have the entirety of a dungeon and we also have a I think the entirety of a dungeon and a small quest until we're actually back in where we're normally supposed to be. But with that, let's continue. Hmm. I am sorry that you had to witness that. Hmm. Um, you were talking about breach time, your majesty. Hmm, yes. Now in return for rescuing my sons, I shall release you a piece of Hamlin lore. 
It states that the spell required to travel through time is hidden on the Tombstone Trail, along with the wand required to cast it. Um, Tombstone Trail? I don't like the sound of that. Hmm. The Tombstone Trail winds its way through a desolate valley to the northwest of here, and its end stands on, stands on an ancient altar dating from the Age of Sages. That is where you will find the, that legendary wand, Mornstar. Uh, Mornstar? Prove yourself worthy of wielding that wand, and you shall surely be deemed ready to cast Breach Time. Be aware, however, that you can only cast Breach Time once in your life. If you ba go back to the future, you will not be able to return to this time. Do you understand me? Um, yes, your majesty. We understand. We're going to get Marnstar and travel back to our own time. Hmm. Your enthusiasm is admirable. Yet beware, the Tombstone Trail is home to countless evil spirits. Take this spell and use it to keep the fiends at bay. Ooh, Arrow of Light. I believe that's a, um, attack spell, actually, for light-based magic. Pierce your enemies with an arrow of, arrow of radiant golden light. The spell which produces gleaming arrows that soar through the air is known for being especially effective against nightmares. Additionally, it is claimed that some ancient sages would fire such arrows into the night sky as a means of communicating with distant companions, further proof that adaptability and the hallmark of a great wizard. Okay, we'll definitely take the Arrow of Light spell. Thank you, Mr. Emperor, sir, and thank you indeed. I really like that spell, and I remember that being really good now that I think about it. Um, we sure will. Thank you, Your Majesty. Yeah, thank you indeed, the Emperor of Hamlin. I believe we have to walk all the way back in order to actually get back to the beginning. So I'm gonna- oh, we can't do it inside here. Well, I tried. Well- I'm going to be right back since we have to make our way all the way back outside of Hamlin just to get to the next area. I'm going to say there might be a cutscene, so we'll at least get outside of the palace first before we even think of that for sure. And if that is the case, I'll actually be meeting you guys actually right in front of the, um, the area that actually goes into the Tombstone Trail. We'll start from outside of the actual area. We won't go inside um, straight into the dungeon when we come back. So just in case, I'll be right back since it seems like we do have to walk all the way back um, outside of Hamlin. So I'll be right back and we'll you'll know your answer if I'm in front of the Tombstone Trail. So fear be boys and girls. Okay, now that we're actually really, really close to the Tombstone Trail, we're actually going to start it from here. Because I didn't want to walk too far out. I wanted you guys to at least see the path leading to it. Kind of like the volcano. So with that we actually use bridge here. Because of the fact that we actually don't have a straightforward path. Actually leading to the tombstone trail. So we actually have to rebuild this area. So just like so we have a new path to actually traverse. Which actually lets us into the dungeon. So with that I don't know if um, we have to worry about these monsters too much. I think we're actually faster than most of them. They aren't going to give us that much experience, so it doesn't matter if we run away from them or anything. We'll be fine if we don't fight these guys, but we will be fighting quite a bit inside the Tombstone Trail, more than likely, because the enemies in there are actually more aggressive than the ones that are outside on this little area. I believe there's a name for this. Yeah, the Ghostly Gorge. But with that, we're officially at the Tombstone Trail. I don't know if there's a cutscene immediately as soon as you get here, and there is, so I'll be right back. And with that, we're officially in the Tombstone Trail. And it is actually one of the coolest dungeons in the game, in my opinion. I think this has to be my favorite, I think. Um, either that or the final dungeon. But I think this is my favorite, if I had to pick one. Because I like spooky aesthetics. As you can see, my name's Optic Spooks for Optical Horror. So honestly, you can tell why I would like some kind of like the spooky aesthetic more than some of the other areas in aesthetics but other than um when it comes to actual towns i definitely gotta say that hamlin's my favorite and then it would have to be yule but with that let's actually progress in our story hmm here we are the tombstone trail hey i'm guessing that's gascon huh 
What's here? It is, hey. <laughs> Heading into the valley, are ya? Well, we're coming with ya. What? You're not serious. Hmm, flipping Heckmon. They must have followed us all the way here, the cheeky little beggars. Hmm, you've got a gun, haven't ya? Well, I'm building my own special gun. Looks like we've got some things in common. Here, look and learn. Okay, I'll definitely take a look. You've received a new alchemical formula. Go to the cauldron to try it out. Ooh, thanks. Ah, oh, dear me. Were you always this cocky? Mmm, but we can't very well go leaving you to get lost in a place like this now, can we? If anything happened, the Emperor would go flipping spare. <laughs> you don't honestly think my father would lose a moment's sleep if I disappeared, would you? Uh, he doesn't give me a damn about me. And all he cares about is this, is Markison. It's gone, that's not true. Uh, come on, let's go. I'll go without you if I have to. Why is he? Why is he giving orders all, to us all of a sudden? Oh wow, I'm struggling to believe it myself. What were you thinking? I'm sorry. What was that, Swain? Um, nothing. Come on, let's go. Okay, Gascon and Marcuson are now traveling with you. Although they won't be able to help us in battle, it's just having them around, honestly. So, thanks, Gascon and Marcuson. We technically have Marcuson on our team for a bit, I guess you could say. Although he's not really um selectable or transferable as you can see you can't sh swap out Swain or S3 turn into him but it's, it's still nice to have him for now I believe we go let's see here based on the map I think that is for a treasure chest so I think we don't go right I think we go left so let's go this way hey it's one of the ones we used in the previous series I think your name was Shade if I remember correctly but yeah, he was pretty cool. Sunshades are pretty good. Um, they're more of support allies, based on what I remember. Um, he wasn't very strong, and we ended up swapping him out later in the game for our um, our big old uh, big old boy dragon thing. That was really cool. But honestly, hmm, I don't think we would use him again since we're we're all on uh, board on getting new familiars. Although I do need to. Okay, I thought I was gonna get attacked by something there. Let's serenade him just because, since we have the ability to, might as well grab another one for the f for just to have the good old sakes, just to have him again. Okay, there we go. Send her to attack with Ray, and then go back into Oliver, since Oliver should be fine to go and attack again. Got a bunch of zombos and boogies. I love me some boogies and zombos. They're definitely some pretty funny uh, little familiars. Although, um... What do you call it? The Zombos are pretty weird sometimes, because they actually have like little fighting gear outfits. They remind me of a different game series that's kind of like this, where you use like familiar-like enemies, and I think it's supposed to be a reference to it. Ooh, Valbar reached level 25 and gained a new trick slot. Really? Huh, just like that, that's pretty cool. And just like before, I want to actually name him Shade, since that was his name if I remember correctly. So welcome back to the game, Shade, and we won't be using you, but it's just nice to see you again. Oh, I actually did walk the wrong way. Look at that. So apparently I did walk the wrong way, so might as well, since we're right next to it, might as well heal. And let's walk our way back this way. I thought because this one had the treasure chest, it would actually be the wrong um, way to go, but apparently I was wrong. That's surprising. Apparently the treasure chest shows you the way to go. <laughs> Surprisingly, usually you, you go the opposite direction. Ooh, wisps. Okay, um, it's not a wisp that I want, but there's a thing called a girl fiend. Um, it, I think that's what we want to grab for later. Ooh, Demon's Fury. Thankfully we dodged that. That could have hit hard because we don't have any magical defense when it comes to our little buddy Felix here. And if he got hit there, he would not have had a fun time. Thankfully, we do have magical defense for our other allies. Oliver's our magical defense when it comes to um, Oliver specifically, because he has some really good magical defense. I'll actually show it real quick, just because we're here. He has 104. Everyone else on my team right there is less than 82. So other than that, we have 113 for her, for Esther, so that's pretty good. And then um, Ivern is the highest for Swain, which is always good. But let's actually throw on his new ability now, since he actually can use one. Um, let's do Blunt. Blunt sounds cool, because then we can raise our attack as well. And then we also have, um, we can lower their defenses. So that sounds really good. I think that should be fine. And we actually have a way to gain defenses. 
get rid of defenses, and also, um, now we can raise attack, which is really good. We have some really good things we can do now, based on some of the, some of the abilities we're using. Wait, that doesn't work? Let's see here. Mm, looks like that bridge seems better days, right, Ollie boy? Crack out your wand, you know the drill. Okay, I'm guessing rejuvenate then. I was actually going to use bridge there, but apparently that's not the one we need. We got to restore this to its former glory. Okay, bridge, we need you back up and running so we can actually make our way further and further into the tombstone trail. And just like so, like that, it's pretty much easy. All you got to do is just use a couple magical spells and you can do anything. Okay, let's see if we can maybe get the upper hand on him. Yes, we did. Always like sneaking up on him from behind because it always gives you some good things. Okay, let's see here. So the first one I think we should get out of the way is the Boogie. I think Boogies attack really fast and have high attack. And then we want to get rid of Zombo. I think that's our um, case of action, I think. I could be wrong. Oh no, Blunt gives you... Wait a minute. Oh, Blunt gets rid of their attack. Oops. I thought that was um, the one that gave you attack. Oops. Ooh, ooh. Well, we got hit there and I can't cancel him. Okay, uh, team, I need you to help me out here. I need you to just attack him, and hopefully our buddy... Oh, we actually cancelled... How did I do that? I just bugged out feelings there, because he should have kept attacking. But apparently he just stopped doing it. Cool. Because I told them all to attack, feelings just completely didn't know what to do and just gave up. That's actually really good. Huh, I need to use that more, because that completely negates um the confusion. Just like that, I'll take it. It's probably a once-in-a-lifetime thing that I've done, honestly. So honestly, I probably wouldn't even be able to use that to my advantage, but it's still cool to see in general. Okay, another light or sunshade. A bony dude. Hey, bony dude. <laughs> Let's go check this dude out. He looks pretty fun. I do. I don't know if I want to use the wisp or the girl fiend for um, for our, one of my last few familiars to grab, because the reason is is because there's some really really good familiars in this game. And, um, I don't know, I don't remember Wisp being a good one. Uh-oh. Okay, thankfully it wasn't me that time. Let's use Ray of, Ray of Light since that's actually a big hit. Might as well, since, uh, Sunshade should go down if we use that. And, like, so, down he goes. Now we just gotta attack the little Boogie, and he's on out of here. Okay, get a Boogie in your stump and get on out of here, Boogie. <laughs> okay, and there we go. Easy. I actually, I'm not sure if we're going to be getting our um, next metamorphosis in this episode or not. I would like to. If we can get um, the final me metamorphosis, that would be pretty cool. Hello, bony dude. What you doing here? You look pretty spooky, just like myself. Um, and where do you think you, <laughs> you're going? Um, huh? I can speak? <laughs> How very observant of you, boy. Now let's have a look at you. Oh dear, oh dear me. It would seem you are alive and well. This will not do. This will not do at all. I cannot let you pass. We'll have no heartbeats here. This our area is strictly <laughs> corpses only. Um, really? But we won't cause any trouble. Honest, we won't. Please let us pass, Mr. Skeleton. <laughs> Over my live body. The only way you're getting past me is dead. Just like everyone is that else is not clear. Um, you'll only let us pass if we're dead. That's asking kind of a lot, you know. Hmm, you think just because we're dead, we have no principles, no c -c code of conduct. <laughs> but my boy, to die by. So long as you breathe your bod, live with it. <laughs> um, what are we going to do? Simple. We do as much as a man says, ain't it? Time for a spot of dying, I reckon. Huh? You don't mean... You want us to... Don't be daft, man. I'm not asking you to actually die. Just pretend like it ain't that hard. Um, pretend to die? But how? Mm, with the magic, of course. Now get that spell, the spell book of yours out and find a spell for us and let you pretend you're dead. Um, there's really a spell for that. Actually, there is, and we read that out earlier because we actually read most of the spells that we've been we've been given, other than the one for um the Khalifa, the one that Khalifa gave us since that was a cutscene, and I didn't feel like um cutting in and out. It was really weird, so I just let those go by. But that one's called Bad Apple, if I remember correctly, because we actually read through those. I believe it was one that... Who gave us that, actually? I'm trying to think of who it was specifically. 
It either was... No, it wasn't him. Actually, I don't know. Huh. I actually don't know who it was. That's very surprising. There's... Okay. Okay, I guess I'll take a look. Okay, let's continue. Um, is there anything behind us, like freebies? Um... There's a chest, but I don't think it's that important. Okay, well, let's do this. In order to die, we can do one spell, Poison Apple. Creates a poison apple that induces a death-like state when eaten. And just like so, let's do a spot of dying, shall we? Okay. <laughs> and town goes our M. <laughs> ah, not a pulse among them. They're dead. Dead. <laughs> Come here, quick. Fresh corpses, boys. No first in years. <laughs> first in years, indeed. Um, Oliver, Oliver, wake up. And like that, we have technically died in a way, but that's the whole point of the spell. To fake your own death so you can pretend to die and get away from trouble that could have caused you any kind of trouble. I think it's supposed to be used for if you're um, someone's chasing you down you're tr and they're trying to execute you. You're supposed to use the spell to pretend to die and they just leave you alone. And then you wake back up um, when they're no longer chasing you. I think that's what it's supposed to be, honestly. But we used it for a more... Um, Mm, more of like a little fun fun way of doing it, because we need to get through here. Um, hey, it looks like we made it. <laughs> made it into another graveyard, at least. Um, so does that mean... Wakey, wakey, risen already, I see. Whoa, what's that? <laughs> hey, Mr. Boney. <laughs> Why, I'm your new friend. We're all friends now, lucky you. <laughs> um, thanks? Now come down to commemorate your happy event of your death. Allow me to present you with this k k k k key. Here you are. <laughs> he speaks just like me. <laughs> I always mess up on my way of speaking and I always stutter. He speaks just like I normally do. <laughs> you obtained a skeleton key. Thank you, buddy. Um, what? What's this? <laughs> I'm glad you asked. You see here on the tombstone trail, we don't think, hink, <laughs> that you can have, you have to stop having fun just because you're dead. That's why we're currently in the process of building a magnificent c -c casino. As soon as it opens, you c -c can use that key to let yourself in and stop, start enjoying the millionaire death style. A casino? That's right. A place where the discerning dead can g g can go when they want to die a little. It should take a few decades to build, but the wait would be worth it. Um, a few decades. Um. Hmm. <laughs> well, there's no rushes there. We're all dead after all. <laughs> um, I guess so. Uh, thank you, Mister. Hmm. I've got to say, Mun, for a corpse am animated by arcane magics for the, from the dark beyond. This skeleton is proper friendly. <laughs> yeah, he definitely is. I like the skeletons in this game. They're always pretty nice. Uh-oh. Something's chasing me and I don't know where. <laughs> hey, Wispy! You trying to get me, buddy? You can't get, you can't get through that... <laughs> Can't get through the tombstone, can you, buddy? <laughs> you can't catch me. Okay, let's see where we're going. We gotta go around this guy, so let's wait for him to stop chasing us and then run right past him. Okay, I think this is where we go. I could be wrong, but let's might as well check it. Let's see. Did we go the right way? It looks like so. Okay, perfect. Thankfully, we picked the right way, because there's multiple dead ends when you go certain ways in some of these dungeons, and we went the correct way, it seems. Let's see here. What do we got? We can either go left or we can go right. Another purple chest we can't open. There's a lot of those, aren't there? Anything special back here? Nothing particular. Okay. So we go this way then. Okay, to our right. And let's see what's going on over here. And we can see some other little things, like these little floating uh, lantern-like things. They're supposed to be ghosts or spirits. Or there's like little orbs that you see in uh, ghost films and stuff like that. Honestly, I don't know if those are real or not, because honestly... I don't know if ghost, ghost hunting shows are real or not. There's no way to confirm it unless you actually go ghost hunting yourself or actually see a ghost. And honestly, um, in my past, I thought I saw one, but I could have, it could have just been my 
uh, imagination because I was a little kid. And I honestly think it is because my my mind and when I was a little kid played a lot of tricks on me. I saw some a lot of stuff that I thought I thought I saw, and I saw something that was completely not actually there, and it was just my mind playing tricks on me. But let's see here. Hmm. What's on this then? A little rundown shack, is it? Um. It doesn't look like anybody's lived here for a long time. Well, not, that'll do nicely then. Let's can we keep, shall we? Um. Are you sure that's a good idea, Mr. Drippy? I mean, it looks kind of creepy, but I guess we could rest for a little while. And we have officially made it to the halfway point of Tombstone Trail. Because I remember this little house, and it's always, based on my memory, it's always in the middle. So, well, it's always gonna be based on the map, but it's always, um, you always sometimes have, in the later dungeons, you have little areas where you get rest stops, so you can kind of take a breather and kind of continue with the story so you're not, like, just running through a dungeon for two for about like an hour because some I don't know some um, well if you're fighting every enemy it would take you an hour for some of them but honestly for us thankfully we're high enough level where it's actually we're on par with the enemies and before and when I did this original series um, back in like I believe I worked on it in 2018 even though it says it released in 2019 um, I. I remember being really low leveled for most of this most of the story, even though we were on normal mode. We did do very good. We ended up beating the game, but it did take us quite a while since we did take time on a lot of things, and I didn't even do many cuts or skips because I wasn't really used to it. So with that, so let's continue our story. <sighs> All right, Marcuson, do it. Just like I told you. Um, okay. Okay, Marcuson, try it. What you got? Oh, you got some magic. Good on you, little buddy. Looks like you're doing decent. So Mark, the other Markson was telling a lie then. He just didn't believe in himself that he could do magic. Um, it's go no good. I'm sorry, it's gone. I just can't do it. Aw, poor little buddy. Um, Markson, are you lying to me? What? I know you can do it. Just, you're just pretending that you can't. Um, no, I'm not pretending. Uh, you are. Why would you do something like that? I'm not pretending I'm really not. Aw, poor little bu buddy. I hate that Giscon's always mean to him. Based on what I know, for the most part, he's pretty aggressive. And I don't know why. Based on, like, what I can tell you, I don't I don't know what I could say that can kind of, like, give you an answer without spoiling anything about these, about this story. Because this story is very fun, and spoiling it would be a very bad thing to do. But let's continue. Hey, you shouldn't pick on your little brother like that. Um, I wasn't picking on him. I just want to know the truth. Well, there's no need to be so pushy. I'm sure he'll be able to cast a spell before long. Uh, don't you see? He already cast a spell. He can cast loads of spells. Huh? He's already been able to. And now all of a sudden he's pretending that he can't. Why would he do that? Uh, maybe he enjoys watching Father tell me off. Hmm, I don't think so, but maybe. Hmm, do you really think that is it, Gaston? Gaston. Oh, I thought it- Yeah, I said it right, okay. I said the first- this time I said it wrong, I said Gaston, but I have been saying his name right. I should- I am pretty sure. Hmm? Hmm. Moxon hates sw seeing you getting told off, but he'd hate being separated from you even more. Um, what are you- only those who are capable of becoming sages can ascend to the throne of Hamlin. Isn't that right? Um, how can you- What are you saying that for? Hmm, because Marcuson knows it too. He knows that if he were to show promise as a sage, he- If he showed himself worthy of being emperor, well, I don't need to tell you what would happen. That's why he keeps pretending to be no good at magic. Um, what are you- How do you know all this? <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. All I can say is that this isn't the situation I'd wish on anyone. It matters. It doesn't matter. I want Marcuson to become a powerful wizard. I won't let you stop me helping that happen. Uh, no matter who you are. Hmm. Okay, Giscon. Okay, okay. Uh, I know you won't. Hell, I wouldn't. Aw. Swain doesn't know what to say here, but he's trying to help out at least. Which is very different of him, honestly. He doesn't usually help that often when it came to um, other people's feelings. And he seems to be changing quite a bit. Ooh, hello! 
This is important for later, but this is um, post-game stuff right here. But it's mostly a side quest, so I'll just say that as a side quest and we'll come back to that later. Okay, let's do a nice save since we're up here. Might as well since we've made some progress. And let's keep continuing making our way up the Tombstone Trail since we are only halfway up. And we do have a boss at the end of this dungeon like every other dungeon. So we do need to keep making our way up. And honestly, I think I really want, I really, really want to try and show the boss in this episode. So we're definitely going to do that if we possibly can. Okay, so I think Wisp should be the first one. So let's make sure he goes down first. See if we can evade the sabotage so he doesn't do that to me. Nope, still hit me. Well, I tried. He did, de he did decrease my defense, but we did get a good chunk of him out. So honestly, it wasn't that bad. Let's go into an all-out attack just so my my allies start attacking and helping me out here. And there we go. Easy. Uh, although Swain did waste some mana there, it was, it was still pretty good. He tried to use a water bomb on him and completely missed because it was already down for the count. And there we go. Okay. Let's see here. What do we got here? Another boogie. Might be able to kind of slide by him, which we were able to, which I'll definitely take. If we can get any slide bys, I'll try it, but I highly doubt we'll be able to walk past a lot of the enemies here because a lot of them are really fast. And although, light, unlike the other dungeons we've been in so far, a lot of the enemies in this specific dungeon like to um, catch you off guard if you're not able to. I don't think you can actually dodge that. Hmm. I did try, at least. Well, let's try using a ra- Oh, we got it. We got confused. Thankfully, we broke out of the confusion pretty quickly, though. That could have been much worse. Thankfully, we were able to actually break out pretty quickly. Because I don't trust um, Felix here with his um, fast attacks and high attack um, when it comes to our allies. I, though, although I can help my allies by telling them to defend and stay in a all-out defense... I do think that we do need to be careful. Hey, there's a skeleton in here. Hey, buddy. And look, it's one of the girl, f girl, girl fiends um, that I was talking about. These things are dangerous if you can get one. Because they can actually one-shot anybody on your team in the later game. And that is something we need to be worried about later. Not now, but later. But let's see here. Mm, is it just me or did it get a lot darker all of a sudden? I don't like the look of this. Um, I can't see where I'm going. It's too dark. Come on, Ollie boy, use your head. You've got the perfect spell for brightening things up, ain't it? Um, you're right. Yes, we do. We actually do have the spell, so let's see here. It should be called Magic Lamp. Making dark places all nice and bright. Although it's only time, so we can't use it for long. Let's see if we can actually get one of these, because these things are really good, and I want to use one, because I've never used one before. So honestly... If we can actually get one of these girl fiend things, I would actually really um, enjoy it. But we do need to make sure we get rid of it first. So let's see if our percentage is actually good here. Nope. <laughs> I don't know the percentage on that, and I'm going to get rid of this egg roll since he's actually smacking me quite a bit. So let's just get him out since he was blocking me from getting to this boogie in the first place. And there we go. Ooh, we actually got the boogie, though. So let's see here. We get Esther out. Do a serenade. Get them all on our team, because we might be able to use them for like something like Dewey or something in the future. So might as well recruit them for now, because I'm not entirely sure which um, familiars Dewey actually needs off the top of my head. But having a bunch of them for later, just in case, is always a good thing. And got ourselves another planet drop. I've never used planet drops. I've never had a familiar that has um, needed that. I don't know why. It's very weird. Let's hear, what should we name you? Uh, Bugs, Booger, Bugard... Bujalus. What does that mean? Bujalus. Okay, um, I'm gonna name you Booger. That sounds like a funny name. Booger is now your familiar. Welcome to the party, buddy. Let's see what this guy's going on with. If you pass through the cave, you'll find a mighty altar. Or you would, or you would if the patch were, path were not blocked. <laughs> they say the candlelight may be open the way ahead, but I'm afraid I don't have a light. Hmm. Okay, so thank you for telling us about that. So let's actually start lighting these up. I think we can use Fireball here, I think. M what are you trying to do, man? You need to light the things, not to melt them to a flipping puddle. <laughs> okay, let's see here. I think it's um magic, magic Lamp, I think. I could be wrong. I just wanted to make sure, though. I think it's Magic Lamp. Yep, it is. Okay, perfect. I don't remember those being timed, so... But they might be, so just in case we do need to be careful. But we need to light every single one of these if we want to actually pr um, progress. 
So let's see here. We need to find our magic lamp again, wherever it's hiding. There it is, number 12. Okay, remember that for later. Um, is that a red chest? Yes, it is. Let's see if we can get that. I might as well grab it, since there might be something good in there. Two sunshades. They can always confuse me, but who knows? Is the egg roll more worth it? I think the egg roll is more worth it, because he does... He is pretty aggressive. Thankfully, we did block that sea star that time, so we actually do, don't have to worry about getting confused here, so that actually works out perfectly. I need you guys to go into an all-out attack, though, to help me out here, since we do need to get these guys out of our way. I don't mind about my health, since I know my allies will heal me if I put them on the defense, so let's just do that real quick, and there we go, perfect. And there we go, full healed. Just like so, not hard at all, honestly. And I think actually we might have leveled, actually, because... Yep, we did indeed. The reason why I thought that was because the um, go green glim there that we got shouldn't have gave us zero because we were closer to being dead than a 45 heal would have given us. So honestly, I'll take it. Level 30 and a zip fee on level 14. Not bad, not bad. Like it, I like it. Let's see what was inside here. Was it worth my troubles? Misty Shrouds. Okay, I think that's actually good. Let's check that out. Um, 21. It's better than the fine frock that this guy has, so makes it easier to evade, evade attacks. Let's throw it on. 21 defense, not bad at all. Okay, that should help out Esther when coming to trying to defend from attacks now, since she hasn't had the easiest time doing that. Okay, so we need to go down multiple paths here to get all these lights. I might be able to actually get this without actually um, turning this um, Zombo on. Oh, no. Oh no, he's running from us, actually. Let's actually let him run away, since if we just don't attack him, he actually lets us go right up to it. Thank you, buddy. That actually saves us some time. Magic lamp this. There we go. And now we just need to go on the other side where the where the um, skeleton was. So let's see here. It should be this way, since he's the blue marker. Hey, Boogie. I don't think we can run from you, so might as well just try and attack you. Let's see here. So this area is actually going to be really hard to run from familiars, due to how small the, um, the actual pathways are. So... This is this will be actually probably the most fights we'll, we've done um, so far, honestly, when it comes to um, a dungeon. Due to the fact that we've been able to get away from most of the enemies. And also, um, what do you call it? They're more aggressive in this dungeon than they were before. Because we were you're able to easily over-level them as long as um, for the early, ga early game uh, dungeons. So honestly, you're able to run away from most of them when it comes to that area. And usually you don't have to fight them since they're pretty easy to begin with. And there we go. Just keep on doing what we're doing. And there's an egg roll. We can run. No, we can't. He's faster than me. Thankfully, he didn't get the upper advantage, though. Since we turned just in the perfect amount of time, then canceled out his attack there. Okay, let's see here. We can go for a ray of light here. I think we're pretty much done lighting all the candles. So I think we're safe to actually go for some freebies. I want to go for the Wisp instead, though. Take him on out. There we go. Now we just get rid of the Zombo. And just like that, pretty easy. And we got some four, we got four mana back, too, which is always nice. Always, always nice. And level 30 for Esther. Full heal for her, which is always good. So we don't even need to worry about her health now, since she's 100% HP. Let's see here. It looks like this one... Oh, forgot about Curse Traps. Okay, so those actually slow you down in this as well. Okay, so I don't think they're always the same, but they always curse you. So we do need to be careful here. So let's see here. What do we get cursed with? Everyone on our team got cursed for the most part. So it looks like it's not giving us poison, thankfully. I think you can get a couple different um, things that can happen to you. Thankfully, they're not too bad, though. So let's keep making our way. Thankfully, there was nothing over here, so the curse isn't too dangerous yet. Although we do need to get rid of it soon, since we're definitely going to have to worry about this in the next fight. Maybe we can get the advantage on this Zombo here, and that'll actually help us out greatly. Because he won't be able to attack us right away, and we might be able to get rid of the curse by then. Because I think it's a time-based thing, if I remember correctly. Let's use Ray of Light, since that is a big chunk of damage. Wow, 200 to that one Zombo. Not bad at all, honestly. I'm going to attack this one since we're closer to it, since we do have the the lower attack of, um, or lower amount of movement speed, so might as well. And there we go, perfect. Wasn't the hardest thing, but it's, it definitely could have been much worse if he was the one that attacked us first. Thankfully, we got the upper advantage, and we got rid of our, our curse as well. 
Hey, I think this is the path out, so we can't go that way. So, let's see here. We need to find one more candle somewhere hidden around here. Another wisp, and another freebie. And I thought that was running from me for a second, but apparently it wasn't. Ooh, another girl fiend. Okay, we have another chance at this in episode. Because I want to try and get one of these in episode, because sometimes we don't get the familiars that I want in episode. So I would like to maybe be able to recruit one of those if possible, but it looks like they, it looks like we're more than likely going to get one of those off camera. Oop. Let me try and defend if I can. I don't, I've forgotten if that actually attacks you. No, nope, that's the random status ailment. Oops. Okay, that could have been much worse, honestly, but poison leaves you immediately after battle, so we're honestly fine, so... Thankfully, it was a easy one to get rid of, and not something that was going to completely kill us. Because poison's not that bad, but sir, there's some pretty bad ones if you're not ready for it. Okay, there we go. Magic lamp for this. Turn that light on, and we're done with all the lamps. And just like so, we opened up the path out, and we're actually right next to this, so we can actually walk right on out of here. Pretty easy, in fact. And there we go. Perfect. Mm, did you feel that shaking just now? And what about all that noise from over by the other side? It made my lantern rattle mun. Hold on, my fairy senses tell me we might be able to carry upon the path now, and my fairy senses never lie. Hmm. Okay. Well, ow. Didn't expect a curse trap there. Well, I'll definitely take it. Avengers badge? What is that? Let's check it out. Um, who can use a badge? You can. Let's see, what do we got here? Deflects damage back onto the attacker. Hmm. Okay, not bad. I don't know if I have anyone that's actually good on using that, though, but I'll think about it. I don't know who to use that on. I don't know if um, our one uh, Goliath, our, our Megalith Goliath, can use that perfectly, because he has so much defense that I don't think it will actually count it. If it counted um, damage that you negate, then I would think of doing it. Oh, we have another chance of maybe getting this Girl Fiend again. Okay, let's try it. Ray of Light on that one. Make sure that one's out first, because I don't want to find out that it can one uh, do that nice attack that it can easily do later levels, and I don't know if it actually can or not. Ooh, what is he? Oh, I guess you can completely negate what they do. That's actually pretty nice. Okay, well, you guys do whatever you're doing, since I'm kind of stuck here until the game lets me move again. Okay, he's going for Spite. Thankfully, it wasn't on me, because I had the worst magical defense. So, honestly, thankfully, they didn't go for me on that, because that could have hurt, honestly. And I'll definitely take me some free no um, getting hit by magical attacks, honestly. Because games, uh, magical attacks on certain users that don't have any defense can hurt, and I mean hurt. But, here we go. We're on out of this cave, and now we can progress with our little adventure here. Where are we going next? Looks like we're really close now. We're almost to the end of this dungeon. Just gotta make our final trek through. And the Whisper running away from us now, which is a... What is with the curse traps? I don't rem I didn't remember there being this many. Wow. Okay. Well, it'll take me a free chest, even though we took some dangerous um, things there to get it. Ooh, we got an item, though. I'm guessing that's... Is it one of these? Ooh, plus two, plus four. Okay, um, not as good as my poison, but this guy can use that because he has a lot of um, magical attack because that's his main form of attacking. So honestly, 131 attack is not bad and he gets to keep the plus two from the beast fang. So I'll take that and that's actually really nice. Thank you, game. Okay, let's keep making our way though. The magic lamp is worn off and it looks like the enemies are still running from us even though we have a curse, which is perfect. I'll definitely take that over being chased down, honestly. Okay, we're almost to the end of this dungeon. I believe this is the final trek right here. This is the final little pathway until we actually get to the boss. So let's do a nice heal. Big ol' heal, because we need this. Make sure to save, because the boss can more than likely get rid of us if we're not careful, so we might as well make a big save there. Oh, it looks like we do have an enemy in our way, but honestly, might be able to walk past him. Nope. He doesn't want us to go right by. I did try at least, but it's, it's fine. We lose a bit, a little bit of, of mana for this, but honestly, it could have been much worse. So honestly, I'll just I'll take the freebie that the game gave us. It gave us a free heal, but it gave us a free um, free terms of getting attacked by the enemies here. So honestly, it's not the worst thing. I can just healing touch myself for plus four, or I can just run towards this real quick. I'm gonna have them go all out 
just so I can easily go over here and do whatever I want. Grab all the glims I can to get the nice heal that I can possibly get. I think I fully healed from that, maybe. Let's see here, is it a perfect, or is it not? We'll find out very shortly if it was. Pick me up, I don't know what that ability is. Let's see here, what did I get? Uh, it did take some damage. Okay, just do a full heal by using healing touch a couple times, and there we go. I don't need to worry about the 12 mana that, or, yeah, 12 mana that was used to cost, or co the cost for the healing touch and stuff in general, so thankfully we don't need to worry about that. But here we go. This is where the boss is, so let's do this. And I believe he has a really hard to say name, so I believe his name is Candle Lacabra, if I remember correctly. So I'll be right back, boys and girls, and here comes the boss. Well then, I guess we're gonna have to prove we've got what it takes to get it. Everybody ready? And with that, we officially have, and I did remember it was long, but I did get it wrong. Candle Labra Cadabra is a very hard name to say, in my opinion. And honestly, it's not the worst possible thing we could be fighting, although he is very dangerous because he's a magical user. Thankfully, Phalanx here actually has a resistance to fire, so this is actually really good for us. So let's throw out Felix into this fight, and let's go for a Ray of Light immediately. Might as well see how much damage we can do. We did a decent amount, although he is going to hit us like a truck, though, and that is honest. Let's just have him go into an all-out attack until he starts going for his actual attacks. Uh oh boo. Ooh, please tell me I evaded that. Please tell me I evaded. Did I evade? No, I did not. Owie. There we go. That's the reason why he's dangerous. He actually can curse everyone on the map, and that's really bad. I think it does go over go away over time, so we don't need to worry too much. Oh, here we go. Here's a handy trick for you, Ollie boy. Evil times like this that use a lot of darkness attacks are weak against light attacks, man. So it's just as well as the Emperor gave you that spell, ain't it? You know the one I'm on about, don't you? The 91, yes. Yes, de definitely. Can I grab that golden glim that fully heals me if I grab- No, why'd you take it? I needed that more than you did. Get a nice heal in. Ooh, splash down. We needed to defend immediately, though. As soon as that goes in. Defense, defense, defense. I gotta defend in, but... Not sure about my allies here. I remember this being some big damage. Okay, it's not damage, thank you. Ooh, that could have been much worse. Okay, okay, okay. Um, let's just stay Oliver for now, I guess, and go for Arrow of Light. Just have our allies go for things. Hit him with an Arrow of Light, just do as much damage as we possibly can do here. Hit him with as much light-based attacks, I believe. Um, oh, Wacko Lantern. Thankfully, I defended there, because I believe that is his big attack. Yep, it was. Oof. Thankfully, I timed that perfectly. Let's go for this, since Oliver is better for the Burning Heart here, because um, all of Oliver's familiars that I have currently are more support-based when it comes to their um, Golden Glims, except for Might, our little spook. So honestly, there's not much we could do there, so it's honestly better for us to use that. Or we could have just went for... Um, ooh, we, I think we just got our chance. There we go, perfect. Okay, everyone needs to go in then. Everyone go in as much as you can. Just attack him as much as you can. Come on, run, run, run. This is the biggest chance we have to get some damage on him, since he likes to fly around the battlefield. And thankfully, we're doing pretty good here. Ooh. Multiple Golden Glims. I'm taking that. Did I get the inner, inner strength? I don't think I did, but he did hit us with Boo. Which is bad, but honestly not the worst case scenario. I did lose my thing, but honestly it could have been much worse. Let's heal Esther. Oh, he got it! Okay, Swain got the inner strength. He grabbed it before I did. Okay. Well, I guess that's fine. Okay, Arrow of Light for me. I'm gonna have my allies go and attack now. I don't know what hit me there. Uh oh, defend. Okay, I got the defend on off, but my allies did not. Thankfully, I got it off though, because that could have hurt. We don't need. We need to make sure that at least one of us is defending that. If I can, it's more than like more better that all of our allies defend that. But if we can at least get Oliver to block it, that's honestly the best case scenario. Let's tell my allies to block that since I'm not going to be able to, since I was still in the 
casting of, of our attack there. Okay. Could be bad, but it's not the worst thing. Okay, I don't have any mana left, so I need to actually start going in. Um, but I am going to use a white bread on myself. Oh, no, I kind of was hoping that they were using that on themselves. I'm going to have my allies go in for an all-out attack and see if they can do anything here. Let's try and get some damage in. Evade. Ooh, perfect evade. Okay, I at least blocked that. I don't know about my allies. Wait. No, I, I hit evade. I hit evade. I'm 100% on that. Um, I actually can't help them here. I could give them some provisions, but honestly, I feel like them defending themselves right now is probably the better case scenario here. I think Swain just went down. I could be wrong, but it's, let's see here. E nope, Swain's still alive. Okay, I'll take it. Okay, let's see here. Um, I'm going to have my allies go in. You guys do a damage. I'm going to try and block as much as I can here. I believe Snuff Out shouldn't be that bad. Yeah, it isn't. Okay, that's the blindness one. We should be fine. Okay, perfect. I just need to make sure that I didn't get hit there because I need to make sure that we survive so we get the full amount of our experience here. And down goes Candle Lacombra. I'm going to just call him that because it's the closest I can get to his name because his name's really hard to say. I'm just going to be honest. I don't know why they picked that name for him specifically, and I don't know if they were even able to pronounce it, to be completely honest. But there we go. We got a bunch of levels here. No one's getting a um, metamorphosis, but it's still good to get a bunch of levels because that means it's closer and closer to where we need to go. And down goes the ghoulish guardian of this dungeon, and I'll be right back. It doesn't know what to give up! Hey? Huh? Huh? Marcusan! Yes! And just like so, there's proof that Marcuson is far from being a amateur at magic. And it looks like we, and like Swain was right on that. It looks like maybe Swain was just, um, Swain was right on what he was trying to say. That maybe, maybe Marcuson's just trying to be nice to his brother so he doesn't get cast and out of the castle. And I think he, honestly, I think he wants him to become Emperor. I think that's the case, but I could be wrong. I don't know the exact reason. I think it glosses over it very literally, like very slightly, but it doesn't tell you the full extent of what's going on, I believe, if I remember correctly. That's why I'm explaining it. But let's continue. Um, Marcuson, that spell, did you? Um, yeah. Hmm, you did it, Marcuson. You got him. Hmm, <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> yes, it was. Um, thanks, Giscon. Um, Marcuson, you saved us. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, buddy. Um, oh, it was nothing. Now, Harry, let's get more star. More star. Mm, he's right, you know. Come on, Ollie boy. Let's head for that altar, ain't it? Yeah, let's definitely head for the altar. Let's get ourselves some more star. That'd be nice to get. And it looks like we got a cutscene, so BRB. Look at that! What a beauty! It may be older than my mom, but it's still got a bucket load of oomph! So this is the legendary wand, Morinstar. Ah. You have done well. Who are hey. you? I am one who guides the fate of this world. And yes, it was I who summoned you here to this time. Huh? I had scant choice but to bring you here, for in your time, Bornstar has been... mislaid. For my boldness, you must accept my apologies. Know that countless trials lie ahead of you still. Steel yourselves, and fix your sights upon your goal. Until the day when you finally arrive, I shall be waiting. He's gone. And just like so, we have obtained Mornstar, and also met the guy behind the scenes. Because, as Shadar and the White Witch said, there's somebody kinda helping us. And that is actually the person. 
And because of the fact that his name's not important, and it's not a spoiler, we can actually go on with his name. His name is Gallus, and he is our guardian angel, for the most part. I'm not going to explain any more, that's all I'll give you. Because he is the one that's been helping us, and he's helped us get Mornstar. As it was so told to us, it has been mislaid, but we don't know exactly how, based on how Shadar said it. He didn't say what happened to it. But we at least got ourselves Mornstar now. So with that, let's see what we can do now. You have obtained the page describing the Breach Time spell. Ooh, okay, here we go. Pick a point in time and leap across the con con continuum. Though fraught with danger, this is the only method by which a wizard may take a leap through time to a moment of their choice. The spell is overwhelmingly powerful and can only be used once in a wizard's lifetime. Once, once time has been re breached, one cannot go back. Of all spells available to a wizard, the casting of this one in particular requires a careful consideration. One time, one use. Gallus used his on us. So, we only have one way back. And that is breach time. And with that, let's continue. <laughs> breach time, eh? I suppose the rumors about you lot coming from the future are true, then. <laughs> I've never seen any mis masked wizards here in Hamlin before you, though. Have you, Moccasin? No, never. <laughs> Not indeed. Well, let's head back to Hamlin for now, Oliver. We need to take the princes back to their father. Yeah, let's definitely do that. I think we should finish off this chapter in this episode since... There, although there is a little bit more to this episode, since we have to make our way back to Hamlin, and then we can finish the chapter, um, I feel like we should end it this episode so I can, on the next episode for episode 19, we can start working on the side quest for Hamlin. And I also think we get the um, teleport spell soon. I could be wrong. But I think we actually get that next, which is actually really good if we do. Please, game, please be right. I want that to be a case, because that makes things so much easier for traversing back to any, dun any place we've missed and anything we need. So honestly, it'd be really nice to have. But hopefully I'm right. I could be wrong, though. Hmm, yeah. Um, are you okay, Gascon? Yeah, are you okay, buddy? Thankfully, we do have a spell to leave this dungeon, because we have vacates. So let's vacate the premises and get on out of here. Thank you, Horus. And then we got that from one of our one of our episodes from back in the back in one of the I believe it was the episode 16 in specific is when we did that when we got all our um, side quest missions. So with that, I'll be right back once we actually make it our way back to Hamlin. So beer be boys and girls. Oh, here we go. We got something happening now. Okay, let's see what's going on. Hmm. Okay. What are you doing, Giscon? I'm sorry, everyone, but this is where I say goodbye. It's time we went our separate ways. Huh? Um, what are you talking about? Are you coming back to Hamlin with us? Um, no, I'm not going back. I've got my own journey to go on. Um, your own journey? You mean you're running away from home? It seems so. Hey, look after yourself, all right? Here, you better take this. What is he giving him? Hmm, okay. Uh, father gave me that sword, but you're the one who should have it. It's the kind of sword that a sage should wield. A sage like you should will be some day. Hmm. <laughs> hey, don't cry. You don't need to be scared. If you ever get in trouble, I'll come and help you, I promise. Wherever you are, no matter how far away, I'll always be there for you. If you need me. Um, wherever I am. Yes, I promise you. But if I'm going to live up to this promise, I'm going to have to do some training of my own. As Father keeps saying, I need to find my own role within the Empire. I need to find out what I'm go good at. I won't let them down. I refuse to be a disappointment. Um, Alright, but please come back soon. I'll be waiting for you. <laughs> you do that, Marcuson. We'll meet again one day. You'll see. I wish you and your friends all the best well, as well. Oliver, I hope you you make it back to your time. Um, thank you, Prince Giscon. I sure hope we meet again someday. <laughs> I don't think you'll have to call me Prince anymore. 
Well, goodbye. <laughs> goodbye, Giscon. Goodbye indeed. Hopefully we meet you again sometime soon. Hey, wait! <laughs> what is it? Are you really sure about this, Giscon? Hmm. <laughs> it's what I've decided. I'll be better off watching Marcuson from afar, watching him become a sage. I don't change my mind once. I've made a decision. That's the Giscon way. The Giscon way? Well, it sounds like you're determined to be your own man, but I refuse to say goodbye. Um, just say until next time. <laughs> All right, until next time. In the future. In your time. See you then. <laughs> See you then, Giscon. See you in the future. <laughs> Take care, Giscon. <laughs> Take care indeed, buddy. Take care indeed. Gosh, that boy really is stubborn. Yeah, he is. He definitely is. Now, come on, Oliver. Let's head back to our time. <laughs> sure thing. Hmm. Giscon is no longer traveling with you. And he's gone for good. We won't be seeing him for quite a long time. In a way. <laughs> and that's where I'm going to tight lip everything I know. So... I'll see you guys very shortly because I believe we have to walk all the way back to the palace. So I'll be right back and we'll be inside the palace next time we see, see each other. So beer be boys and girls. Oh, the Emperor! Your Majesty! Uh, <gasps> Father! Uh, but why? What happened? Sh Shadar... Shadar? Yes, he was here. He came to... to... demand our unconditional surrender. Huh? But, but let it be known, I defied him. I would not bow to that wretch. No, don't. Don't try to speak. Gascon. Huh? My son. My beloved son. Huh? You really thought I couldn't tell? You knew? Your appearance may have changed. But I know my own flesh and blood. What the future holds is a mystery to all men. But I know... I know that together, you and Marcusan can, I believe it, you protect the Empire now and in the future. Father! No! Father! Please! Father! got to meet you again. And now this. I just wanted... I just wanted to make you proud. And now... This has to happen! Damn it! Explain. No! Several days later. Oh, I hate that scene. I honestly do. It actually, that scene always makes me cry, and honestly, I'm crying a little bit right now. But, yeah. As we saw, Gascon is Swain. And that's why I was trying to not tell you guys who he was, because it was very important that I didn't do that. Because, as you saw, we finally found out who Gascon was. And, just like so, the Emperor of Hamelin is dead. And... Now, it's just Marcuson and Swain's duty in order to help Oliver and Esther hopefully take down Shadar. And with that, let's continue. I wonder what's taking Swain so long. Mm, I just can't believe that he's just gone. The hail of all the handling. My, head's, my mind's boggled beyond all belief, man. I guess he didn't want us to know, huh? I suppose so. Oh, it wouldn't be the same. It won't be the same now. We know that he's a prince. Well, I'm going to act like I don't know. Me too, unless Swain wants to talk about it. I'm not going to say a word. Hmm. 
Oh, you don't need to worry about me, mud. I have forgotten all about this in a bit. I couldn't remember it if I wanted to be. If there's one thing I'm good at, it's forgetting. I'm um, sorry to keep you waiting. Hey, guess. <laughs> hey, Swain. Swain! I suppose it's time to go, but I need to say goodbye to Marcuson first. Um, all right. Okay, buddy. It looks like we're leaving you alone by yourself now. Um, it's today that you're leaving, isn't it? Um, yes, your highness. Um, thank you for everything. Um, no, no, I should be thanking you. Because of you, I was able to become my father's heir. And soon I'll fi finally for I'll formally inherit the title. Hmm. Yeah, I bet the people of Hamlin are glad about that and all. I mean, to give them a reason to be, I want them to know that they have nothing to fear from Shadar. I refuse to let him defeat us. I want Giscon to be able to come back to Hamlin whenever he likes, after all. I must keep the Empire safe until he does so. <laughs> You'll make a fine for Emperor Moccasin. Giscon would be proud of you. <laughs> I hope so. He always believed in me. And I shall never stop believing that he will come back. <laughs> it hurts, man. Mm, look at your lucky dolly boy. It's all a glow, man. You don't think. It must be. Marcuson's belief in his brother must be real strong. Um, I'm sorry, I... Your Highness, there's someone that who needs your help. Someone who needs some of the strength that's in your heart. M my heart? Whoever are you talking about? Well, you, Your Highness. In the future, I mean. In our time, a piece of your heart is missing. M my future self. That's right, and we need you to share some of your belief with him, to help him get better and back to normal. M my belief? Um, very well. I can't and hardly refuse my own future self a piece of heart. <laughs> okay, Marcuson. Thank you for being you, buddy. M I will gladly share my heart. Come take it. Okay, let's take ourselves a piece of heart. From Marcuson and give it back to Marcuson once we make our way back to old or future Hamlin, I guess you could say. The no noble certainty of unshakable faith. You have obtained some belief. And just like so, we have our next piece of hearts. Um, thank you very much, Your Highness. Yeah, thank you, buddy. Um, there's no need to thank me. Now please give that belief to my future self. But before you go, um, Swain. <laughs> yes? When you return to your time, please give my regards to my future brother. <laughs> Why? That hurts. It, and Marcuson doesn't even know him. <laughs> that hurts, man. Hmm, I'll be sure to do that, your highness. Hmm, right oh, back to the future it is. You know which spell you want to do, don't you, only boy? Reach time, ain't it? Um, Roger, let's go, everyone. To the future. To the future, indeed. And just like so... We just gotta cast one breach time, the one and only time we can use this. Transports the caster to a desired point in time, can only be used once in a lifetime. And technically it's my second time using this, cause, well I'll say it later, but beer be boys and girls. Okay, all together. Today, Today tomorrow, tomorrow, yesterday, yesterday send us safely, safely on, on our way! way. <gasps> Oliver's gone! They've all gone! And just like so, we're back in the original time period that we were in. Um, did we make it? Huh, aren't we still in the same place? Nah, wait, no way, man! That's impossible! I know when a spell works, and th that spell worked right and proper. We're back in our own time, no doubt about it. Yeah, this place is different somehow. Um, Swain. We made it back. That's all that matters. Now, isn't there someone we should be helping? Um, of course. Come on, Oliver. Let's go find Marcuson. Um, sure thing. Let's go give him his belief back. Yep, let's definitely go see Marcuson again. And thankfully, he actually took us back to the palace. So we actually didn't lose much here because we don't have to run all the way back. From outside. Thankfully, it gives us an easy way of getting back to Marcuson. And here he is, all grown up and definitely shattered from his belief. 
Get out now. Um, get out of here. Go. Be gone, I say. Mm, poor land, still broken hearted. That, that's for de definite. A shadow of his former self he is. He needs a dose of belief and he needs it snappy. Come on, Mun. It's what his dad would have wanted. Mm, cease your maddening, Shadow Fairy. My father died fifteen years ago. <laughs> Do not claim to know his will. <laughs> so all that carry on was fifteen years ago, was it? And this poor lad's been on his own ever since. There's tragic. Um, your highness, we brought you something as a gift. It's from fifteen years ago. We got it from, well, we got it from you. Anyway, if it's okay, we'd like to have you to have it back. What did you say? What is the meaning of this? <laughs> well, here you go, Marcuson. I'm sorry that you had to be like this for so long, but let's bring your belief back. I think maybe it might not have been Shadar that did this one. I think maybe he lost belief that he would see Gascon again, but I don't think we will ever be able to figure that one out because the game never tells you that. But it easily could have been Shadar, honestly, but I like I think of it maybe he gave up on, on Gascon, maybe. It could have happened, honestly. But let's see here. Um, what is this? This this glow. <laughs> and there he is, back to normal. What's happening? What is the warmth that spreads within my breast? What have I been doing? All this time I've been so misguided. Um it was Shadar, your highness. He took the belief from your heart. My heart? My belief? Wait, I feel like I believe in people once more. I want to believe in people. It has been so long since I felt this way. Does this mean? Does this mean that you saved me? Was it you who gave me back my capacity to believe? <laughs> it was, Your Highness. I did promise, didn't I? I promised I'd come back and help you if you were in, in trouble. Whenever you were, wherever you were, no matter how far. Wherever I was, I, I see. <laughs> ah, now I see. You came back. I always knew that you would. Thank you. <laughs> There's really no way to thank me, Your Highness. Um, Your Highness, we need your help. We need. We want you to help us too. To defeat Shadar. <laughs> what did you say? You mean to face Shadar? That is impossibly reckless. I am a great sage, and yet Shadar was able to enter my heart and take a piece of it with impunity. And yet I was saved, just as I was promised. Very well, I shall assist you. Together we will defeat Doc the Doc de Jin. Shadal's days are numbered. Um, they sure are. Thank you so much, Your Highness. I knew you wouldn't let us down. <laughs> and that is why you're the Emperor Moccasin. <laughs> that is indeed the case. But it's the reason why I don't have a set in stone... Oh, actually, there's a cutscene, so BRB. What are we to make of this? It seems the savior managed to acquire Monstar after all, and somehow managed to travel back to the present. I would have thought that far beyond his meager power. Indeed. The power to breach time can be used but once in a mortal's life, can it not? It would seem that he has benefited from yet more assistance. And that his benefactor possesses formidable powers. Powers on a par with our own. This supposed helper of his is no mere dabbler in the magical arts. Such powers recall those of that ancient king without whom our magic wands could not exist. Yes, I speak of my... But that would be a truly terrifying proposition, if one such as he were to... Fear not. Should the need arise, I shall take action myself. Your radiance? You mean to say... <laughs> I do. He cannot hope to defeat me. And I will tell you why. It looks like the White Witch is pretty angry with us. And... I think what I was trying to say, but the reason why Swain and Marcuson's voices are very similar right now is because I don't have a set in stone voice for Marcuson yet, and I want to think of one, but I have lots of time to think of it because I don't think we actually unlock uh, Marcuson till almost pretty much the end of the game. So I feel like we don't need to have a set in stone voice for him because we won't see him till we get him recruited is what I remember. So we don't need to worry about his voice too much yet. But let's see here. Oh wait, what the heck? 
Why is Marcuson's name changed to Porcine Prince? That's weird. Huh, okay. Well, Marcuson. All right, everyone. Listen to the order that to defeat Shadar. We must first break his down his defenses. Now the Dr. Jin is protected by a magical bri barium known as the Black Briar. The Black Briar? Um, yes, it's a clo cloying magical barrier with no spell that can permeate. Neither Rashad nor Alicia were able to overcome the Black Briar. That is why Shadar was able to defeat them. Ha! Huh. And with the great other great sages incapacitated, he was able to delve d deep into my own heart and steal a piece of it. Um, but now, Marcus, and oops, I mean, your majesty. Ha, huh, come on along now, Esther. I once fought alongside you as a child. There is no need for you to use my royal title. The same goes for all of you. Um, sure, your ma uh, majesty, um, huh, don't worry, Oliver. I'm sure you'll get used to it. Now, I would dearly love to accompany you on another journey, one where we can grow stronger together, strong enough to defeat Shadar. But protecting the Empire has been has to be my first priority. There is also the small matter of rectifying the many mistakes I made while whilst broken-hearted. I comfort myself with the knowledge that you now possess a wand that should enable you to defeat Shadar with my, without my aid, Oliver. Monstar once belonged to the Wizard King. It is said to have the power to overcome any enchantment. That must surely include the Black Briar that protects Shadar. Unfortunately, however, the wand you have in your own possession is not complete. Hey, not complete? What do you want about one? Monstar's true power is beyond most wizards' comprehension. It is so powerful indeed that the ancient king who created it decided that its power should be divided between the magic three magical stones, also known as the power stones in my opinion. <laughs> like, like Thanos in my opinion, honestly. These three stones were sealed away from far from the wand itself. So we need to go find them, right? Yes, but I have an apology to make in that regard. Huh? Why? What have you done? A map detailing the locations of the three stones was once in my possession. I am afraid, however, that it has been stolen. Um, stolen? While I was broken-hearted, I must confess that I become rather neglectful of the palace's treasures. Books and maps would often disappear. To my shame, I actually observed several th such thefts and did nothing. Hmm, that sounds about right. I found it hard to care about anything much when I was broken-hearted. Um, well, that is a bit, fl bit of a flipping rum. If the thief who pinched the map uses it to get a hold of the stones, what do you think he's going to do with them? Um, I don't know. What I do know, however, is the identity of the thief. His name is Kublai. He styles himself the King of the Sky Pirates. Um, Kublai? Of all people to tingle with. <laughs> yeah. Kublai, the Sky Pirate. Ooh, that's a fun chapter. That is a fun chapter. And that's when we get the ability to fly as well. And that's all I'm going to say. Flying in this game is nice to have. And once we get that ability, it's going to be easy sailing for anywhere we want to travel. And that's going to be really good. But let's continue. Mm, I should have known you two would be thick as arm. Anyway, I do suppose you think you know where he is, do you? That's the thing. With Sky Pirates, you never know where they are. They, they're they always moving the from hideout to hideout on these great airships. Hmm, that is weird. Hmm, be that as it may, locating Kublai is still the easiest way for you to recover the three magical stones. He is very unlikely to cooperate peacefully. However, I had better teach you some new spells, Oliver. Ooh, here we go. You've received a page describing the ward spell. Raise a magical barrier that deflects magical attacks. One, or ward is a sp simple spell, yet the barrier it, it produces is very effective at blocking magical attacks. If attack is the best form of defense, then perhaps the opposite is also true. The moment after an enemy attack has been successfully deflected, it often is the best time to launch a devastating counter. Ooh, I'll definitely take ward. Okay. Fuse. Produces a wondrous new item that are, that are greater than the sum of their parts. While wizards can rely on their cauldron for most necessary provisions, there are some uh, items that even alchemy cannot produce. 
Some find your, or should you find yourself in need of one, it is worth giving the spell a try, and no item is beyond the teach of a master of fusion. Okay, cool, take that. Insights. Reveal the hopes and dreams of invested in a, or dreams invested in an object. Objects that have been in a person's life or possession for a long time are said to be imbued with their owner's thoughts and ideas. Such objects retain these thoughts even after the owner's death, revealing them only to wizards who use a spell. Be aware that the person who want a uh, the person are let's see here, that people are wants to entrust their most personal secrets to their possessions, meaning the information you gleam should not be treated lightly. Okay, I'll definitely take it. Hmm. You will almost certainly be doing a lot of traveling on your search for Kublai. Therefore, let me grant you one last spell. Please. Yes, it is. It's travel. I'll definitely take that. Travel. Traverse continents and oceans in the blink of an eye. The key to incantation transportation is the ability to imagine yourself at your dis destination. It is not enough merely to picture the scenery. All the senses must be engaged. Picture the um. Let's hear. You have to focus until you can hear the sounds, smell the aromas, and taste of the air of the place in question. Naturally, this ma makes it all it makes it impossible for a wizard to use a spell to travel to a location they never visited. You have received the page describing travel. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's like the best spell in the game. Thank you, Marcuson. Thank you, buddy. What does it do your mu- um, Marcuson. Hmm. It instantly transports you to any location you have already visited. While I am unable to accompany you on your travels, I can at least make them pass more comfortably. Um, that's great, and it means we can come and see you any time we like, Marcuson. Huh, indeed. But- be sure to use it to return to some of the other places you have visited on your journey and find out what has changed. If you visit the Temple of Trials, for its example, you will now be able to take part in the Solipsium series, organizing my old teacher, organized by my old teacher Solomon. Oh wow, I almost completely forgot about Solomon and his Temple of Trials. Our, our first priority, though, is to find Kublai, the king, king of the Sky Pirates. Come on, Oliver. The next chapter in our adventure starts here. It sure does. Let's go. And I believe we are officially, and I mean officially, done with this chapter. Just to make sure, we're going to actually leave Hamlin. Just to be 100% sure. Because there's only one way to make sure that you're able to go anywhere you possibly want to. So, let's make sure before we do anything else. I believe we might be able to use um, our new spell, so let's see if we can actually use that real quick. Since we might be able to use travel to get out of here, thankfully we can. Okay, so we want to go back to Hamlin. So let's see if the game will let us do that, just in case, because you never know. So let's see here. Are we free to walk around as much as we want? Seems like it is so, but there's only one way to really tell. So let's make our way to the boat. And on the way, I'll uh, get ready to end this episode. So with that, it's been a really fun journey so far. We're done with my favorite chapter of the game. Although I do say this is my favorite chapter, it doesn't mean that it's going to be a... Not going to be any other chapter is going to be a bad chapter. All the chapters in this game are really fun to go through. But in specific, this is one of my favorites. Or even... I even say, honestly, in my head... I really do think this is my favorite chapter, but there's always ones that I could have forgotten. But in my head and in my um, heart, I think this is my favorite one because the story of Swain is honestly one of the one of the most like heart wrenching moments of learning what happened to him and learning how how he became after his entire journey. Because we saw him go from prince like a well, well, like, well situated prince to literally becoming a thief. He lost everything. But did he grow as a person? I think he did. 
But with that, it looks like we are free to traverse anywhere we, we want to go. So it looks like we should be able to end this episode here then. So with that, thank you all for watching today's episode. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And in the next episode, episode 19, we will be continuing on our side quest for Hamlin. So we'll be doing all side quests for that we can possibly do. I don't know how many there are. If there is too many, we might have to split it up into two episodes, but I think we've been uh, doing it well enough there where we don't have to worry about that. So episode 19 is going to be all about side quests. So if you want to only focus on the story, I'll see you all in episode 20. But if you want to see the side quest stuff and me getting merit rewards and doing the small stuff on the side, because the side story is still pretty cool if you watch over that stuff, because there's some small stories that you can learn. And the overarching story of the side stuff is always fun to see, because it's honestly a little bit of extra story that you get. That Although it's not the main story, it's still a little bit extra story. So honestly, the side story stuff isn't that bad to watch if you really want to. If you don't feel like, if you think that you don't want to watch it, it's fine. So I'll see you all in episode 20 if that is the case. And if you do, I'll see you in, in the next episode. So thank you all for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And peace out. Have a wonderful rest of your day, boys and girls. Hey, boys and girls. Thank you all for watching today's episode. If you liked what you saw today, please leave a like and maybe even subscribe. And hit the bell notification down below. If you guys have any kind of suggestions for games, please put that in the comments down below as well. Thank you all for watching today's episode, and keep being spooky. Peace out, guys.